just a short drive from the glitz and glamour of the famous Las Vegas Strip lands you in one of the most explosive museums in the world, one that is dedicated to preserving the history of the Cold War era and the technology associated with atomic energy. I'm Alan Palmer, Executive Director and CEO of the National Atomic Testing Museum. The desert is a great place to test nuclear weapons because there's little effect on people and populations and there's less effect from seismic problems that would damage buildings and surrounding areas. This city was really built, uh, oddly enough, uh, on the basis of the testing that was happening here starting in 1950. Uh, during that time, the town was so small, it was almost a crossroads for railroads and a little bit of gambling and some, some bars. That was about it. The town grew enormously because of the influx of money from the federal government to develop the testing here in the desert. Trinity was the code name of the first real test of a nuclear device, and it happened on July 16, 1945, in the desert of New Mexico. Less than one month later, the United States detonated a similar device over Hiroshima, Japan, which was a critical step towards ending World War II. Well, the Enola Gay dropped the first bomb on this, the city of Hiroshima in Japan, 1945, in August. And then after that, we were kind of surprised to find the real effects of the weapon were in radiation. That led then to the test site here in Nevada, understanding how those effects work on uh, various structures and, and people. Shortly after World War II, an era of political and military tension grew between the powers of the Western world, led by the United States and its NATO allies, and the communist world, led by the Soviet Union. This period of time is known as the Cold War because it never featured any direct military action. But the threat of a nuclear attack prompted the United States to develop and test nuclear devices. It was important to keep what was happening in the desert away from the Soviet Union because they wanted very desperately to know what we were doing with our nuclear weapons testing program. And so we had to keep that secret. How we did that was we had a great big place in the desert that was almost 1,400 square miles big, surrounded by a big fence. Nobody could get in, nobody could see what was happening. Even though the testing was done in the middle of the desert, miles away from civilization, the site of an atomic blast could still be seen from downtown Las Vegas. This drove tourism to the city, but also caused some concern from the government over a nuclear fallout. Well, obviously, there's, when, when they were doing the atmospheric testing in the desert, there was a danger of some fallout. That was because the, the weapon, when it exploded on the ground, sucked up all the dirt and debris with it, which was carried by the wind, that had uh, alpha particles, radiation particles in it. And so anybody that was downwind somewhere would certainly be exposed to that. Uh, we stopped doing that uh, in the 1960s and went all, uh, totally underground for our testing. So that eliminated the fallout problem entirely. The blast from a nuclear device is incredibly destructive, but what is actually causing that extreme power? It's an enormous release of energy. And when that happens, there's this enormous explosion. There's a lot of heat, a lot of radiation, a lot of impact from the explosion itself in terms of you know, impact forces from the blast. So it's very destructive. Well, I think looking at one of the very first explosions here at the test site was an incredible experience. In fact, people can come to this museum and relive that. We have an interactive theater where we, we do that. You can sit through one of the first atmospheric tests, feel what it was like, and see what it was like. Those above ground tests were pretty dramatic. They would light the sky up for hundreds of miles around. Uh, there was a huge shock wave that was generated, which people could feel, and the light from it was so intense that you had to wear very, very dark uh, goggles, much darker than sunglasses. There are no more tests being conducted in the Nevada desert today, but you can visit the National Atomic Testing Museum to get a better idea of what it was like to experience this fascinating period in our history. Well, what people can see in this museum is the history of the atomic weapons testing in our country. There's a test rocket that they used 
When they launched the weapon, they would send these test rockets up alongside the explosion to measure the effects uh, from that. And sometimes if you look at pictures of uh, above ground tests, you can see these white squiggly lines going up along the side. These, that's what it, these test rockets were. We've got one of those here. We also have some smaller tactical nuclear weapons here, uh, a Davy Crockett, which is about that big, and it's a small uh, hand-launched weapon. Uh, there's also atomic shells that were used in guns, uh, in artillery that they developed too, that were also tested out here. And lastly, an air-launched air-to-air missile that was nuclear-tipped as well. We've got one of those here. In 2011, the National Atomic Testing Museum became one of 37 national museums in the United States in association with the Smithsonian Institution. So you know you've heard the slogan, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. This story happened in Vegas about atomic bombs and nuclear weapons testing. This is the only place that story happened, and that story is going to stay here in the nation's newest national museum.